There's an Afghan asylum seeker called Abdul Abdul Razima. I may pronounce him incorrectly. Um, he was 19 years old, um, came from Afghanistan via Serbia, killed two, two people in Serbia, mm. then applied for asylum in England, got into England by pretending to be 14. Yeah. And there's a picture of this guy. I know this story. There's a picture of this guy. He's 19. He looks like a 19-year-old Afghani bloke, basically. Yeah. He was actually put in school with other 14... with Not other 14-year-old. With 14-year-old children in classrooms mm. in two classes mm. in Dorset. He was kicked out of one school because he was found carrying a knife. So this guy is in with our children. Yeah. With, in schools with our children. A 19-year-old mm. murderer is in schools with our children carrying a knife. Mm got to that part mm. and then eventually he killed a 21 year old English DJ Tom Roberts who was trying to stop a dispute I think he was trying to steal a mountain bike or mm. something this guy this young guy uh, Tom Roberts tried to intervene was stabbed and killed by him yeah how the hell does that happen this is happening all the time across the country we think we think migrants are coming here for a better life, to work hard, some of them are. We're also now attracting the mentally ill from across the world. Because if you're this man, he's probably killed people in Afghanistan, that's probably why he left Afghanistan, because the other tribe were going to kill him because he killed someone in their clan. He gets in Europe, kills three people there, comes there, kills someone. That's what he will do. Many people are mentally ill who are coming here, and we can't stop anyone because our politicians don't have a backbone to stop any of them. We need to start holding some of these politicians accountable because they're directly responsible for the murder of British citizens in yeah. this country. Yeah. You're telling me we can't keep him out? You're telling me we can't determine he's not 19? You can do bone scans and a dentist can look at your teeth and guess how old you are, but we're not allowed to do that because it breaches their human rights. There's always an excuse why we can't fix a problem and we need to get we need to end some of these excuses by pulling out of the ECHR um, and getting rid of some of whatever laws we've got and uh, we need to get around them and get out of them and just say no we're going to do what's best for the British people but our government doesn't do that our government does what's best for what we think is morality that's not your job it get it gets worse than this. So 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 I think I think you and I agree there is too much immigration into this country, yeah. and there's too much uncontrolled immigration. Yeah. By uncontrolled, I don't mean on the boats, because to me there's three elements of immigration. Mm. There's legal immigration, mm. which is where people apply and say I want to come and work here. And that, yeah. We know a lot of that's been coming from. Pakistan and from Nigeria. Yeah. I think that's more of the predominant since the EU, yeah. since with since Brexit. They've just In, replaced India and Pakistan, India, Nigeria. Yes, uh, they're, they're the main out. legal. So they're, yeah. they're what we call legal immigration. Yeah. That's happening. We believe it's not controlled effectively. Yeah. There's illegal immigration, which is people on boats yeah. and other mechanisms getting into yeah. the country. We don't know what those numbers <clears throat> are. You may know what those numbers are. And then there's asylum seekers. Yeah. So these are people who are in a difficult position, and they're saying, England, you're you're a fair country. Yeah. You 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 believe in justice. Please give me asylum. Yes, and and you know I guess that's enshrined in the British culture, the British way of thinking, and or despite the fact we hate ourselves, as we just found out mm. in that survey, you know the idea of fair play and and being a haven for people yeah. who are seeking asylum. So when I say to you, asylum seekers, you immediately think this is somebody from war war torn mm. Yemeni or war torn. Nigeria, mm. or so you immediately think of trouble spots: Syria, yeah. Afghanistan, or what? As that guy was an Afghan yeah. asylum seeker. In two thousand and twenty-three, there were eighty-four thousand applications for asylum to this, which is not a small number. Mm. Not a small number, because there's numbers every. It's the same. Maybe if you yeah. know, if it's a hundred thousand a year, ten years, it's a million people, isn't it? But these applications included a larger number from the following countries: India. Right, so we've now got people in India, which we regard as a safe country, yeah. seeking asylum. Albania, mm. Turkey, Vietnam, Sri Lanka, Brazil, <laughs> so, 
Georgia, Namibia, which is a very safe African country, Botswana, the Philippines, Trinidad and Tobago, <laughs> Morocco, and Malaysia. And in addition, there were 413 asylum applications from the EU. Hmm. So the stupidity of this country, of this Home Office, we are taking asylum applications from safe countries, mm. not just war-torn countries. We're taking them, that list of countries there, you and I would go on holiday to, wouldn't we, without yeah. a second thought? Yeah. So why, why are we doing, why, what possible reason can we have to take asylum seekers from countries like that? Because in the legislation, which will be a UN legislation or EU legislation, it will say you have to process them. So once they say, I'm, I want to claim asylum, you then have to treat them as legitimate asylum claim. Um, we need to get away from that. We need to say, we'll never take asylum claims from these countries. And yeah. do a big list of countries, we'll never take asylum, because we don't believe any of you. Um, but asylum now, and it has been for several decades, getting worse every year, is just the latest illegal immigration scam. Um, you can claim asylum and be approved in this country if you're gay. So many African countries and Eastern, uh, Middle Eastern countries will turn up in this, turn up here, I'm clearly saying, I'm gay, I'm going to be persecuted at home. That's a 100% legitimate reason to be granted asylum. So I, potentially those applications of the EU, there could be a gay bloke in Spain who's saying, I'm being oppressed because I'm gay and I live in this area of Spain, which is they're a bit homophobic. It'd be harder to, to do that for Spain but they'll, they'll, I don't understand the reasons for the European Union one. But, no, I don't. But I don't. other parts of the country, other parts of the world, you'll say gay. Also say you change religion. So if you're coming from a Middle Eastern country, just say I'm a Christian now. Yeah. That's enough for 100% for you to be granted asylum in this country. Um, and once you've been granted asylum, you can then bring eight relatives. Because then you would be connected with your family. So... Asylum now is just the latest long, latest in a long line of scams, immigration scams. And the, the, the people in charge of this are the Home mm. Office. Mm. And the most senior civil servant in the Home Office is a guy called Sir Matthew Rycroft. I don't know if you're aware of that. No. He's obsessed with DEI. Mm. There's a picture of him at the Pride mm. thing with his Pride t-shirt on, prancing around basically. Well, that's how he got to the top of the Home Office. Yeah. So how's somebody like that going to take a hard line in yeah. these situations? They're not. And they've got no intentions of taking a hard line. And the governments don't want them to take a hard line. The only people who want them to take a hard line is me and you. And there's a picture floating around Twitter. It's a staff picture of staff in the Home Office. I don't know if you've seen it. Yeah. There's 18 people in the picture. It's a, I don't know what, what department is in the no. Home Office. It's an office picture. <clears throat> 18 people. At the very edge, there's one white bloke. Yeah. It's just his little face peeping in there. Now, it stands to reason, if that is representative of the Home Office, and I'm sure somebody will tell us that, that it isn't, but if they are populated with brown people, potentially immigrants themselves or whatever, the chances of getting in must be much higher if you're an illegal immigrant or an immigrant. It's worse than that. Have You, you need to Google the press stories for crimes in the Home Office um, f helping illegal immigration. The amount of... We've got people who've been arrested... Oh, you mean dishonestly? Helping. Dishonestly yeah. in the Home Office. Yeah. Uh, running scams in the Home Office while they're working there. Uh, we need to get to a stage where no one who... Where no one who wasn't born in this country should be able to work for the government. Because they don't have a vested interest in the country. That's a radical view. Yeah. That's interesting. And Why? What's, the, what's the rationale behind that for you? Because they ate the good jobs. Yes. So let's give our own people the good jobs. Yes. Instead of immigrants who have come here. Those immigrants' children can have those good jobs. Yeah. But you're an immigrant. You need to you need you need to prove yourself first by raising some decent children and paying taxes. And then your children will have the benefits of being here. But you've got a benefit just by being here. So don't tell me you're hard done by as an immigrant. Hmm. Um people who are born here are more likely to to want the country to succeed. Um, will be less involved in fraud uh, because don't forget these countries that come, many of these people are coming from endemic with fraud and mm. corruption yeah. it's a way of life yeah. they don't think they're doing anything wrong 
this is what we've I did this when I lived in Botswana this is what this is what we always do well not in this country so um I I would restrict those jobs um but the home office people have complained about home office politicians for decades now saying it's too big and it's not fit for purpose it needs it needs closing down and it needs rebuilding as in two public two different departments um to keep it small again because it's just too big and, and you can never get it to do anything did you enjoy that video i think you did come on now hit that bell subscribe comment let's build this channel i need more followers i need more subscribers be part of the journey see you soon